of specific latent heat is just related to a phase change. So what I mean by phase change is uh, you know, something changes from solid to liquid or gas or vice versa. That's why I actually love that little joke. There's solid, liquid, gas. They all matter. Get it? Because they're all forms of matter. Uh, uh, so we have this, the formal definition of it. So specific latent heat is the energy per unit mass absorbed or released during a phase change. So uh, we have an equation for it. I'm going to write it down for you here. That's going to be really important, I think. So we have Q equals ML. So just like for a specific heat capacitor, we had Q equals MC delta T. Here we have Q equals ML, where Q is the heat. Remember, that's just the energy, isn't it? So uh, energy, so that's measured in joules. M is the mass. Mass is measured in kilograms. And the specific latent heat is this property, right? It's the energy that's absorbed or released during a phase change. So it basically tells you um, how much energy is needed to change phases or what's happening within a phase change, because maybe it can release energy as well. So um, the specific latent heat, in order to know the units for it, again, just try to figure out hmm, if I get L by itself. To do that, I have to get Q divided by M. So that would mean then I would have, uh, let's see, joules per kilogram. There we go. That's it. Um, whenever you're working with these kinds of situations, so if you've got a question where you're supposed to solve, um, you've got a phase change happening and you've got uh, things changing temperature, then all you would have to do is add a term Q equals ML for any phase changes. So for example, let's say you had uh, you know T being put into, like we talked about in another example, T being put into a cup, but maybe that cup also had water in it or maybe it had ice in it. You know, so maybe it actually had ice. But then because of that, you'd have to also have an ML because it's phase change. So what you would do, you would have the T, you'd have the cup, um, you would have ice itself has to change phase. You'd have energy related to that. That's the Q equals ML. And then once it's changed phase, you also have that water then. So you have that sort of Q of that water it has to also change temperature. So changing a temperature sort of costs in Q uh, and changing phase also costs in Q. So that's why we have a Q equals ML as far as that goes. Um, I don't think I really need necessarily that example there, or else it's going to get, ah, maybe I'll leave it. So let's say we do a, a graph here. We're looking at a graph of the temperature of a substance versus the amount of energy that you add. So as we keep adding more and more energy, um, the temperature usually just goes right up, doesn't it? Not quite. That's the whole point of this. I'm going to show you this. So um, let's just say we do this in, maybe we'll do it in red. So when it's at uh, really, really cold, so really negative temperature in Celsius, of course, in Kelvin, it'll be zero, right? But uh, in Celsius, let's just say we start off really, really cold, and we add energy to it. We add heat. By adding heat, um, when it's already um, a solid, let's assume this is water. Let's assume this is H2O in uh, solid form. So in this case, in this ice, like this dumb example here, like this uh, dumb joke. So solid, we have ice here. The ice itself, if it's super cold, all the energy being added is going to go towards raising its temperature. In other words, it's going to go to, you know, a Q equals MC delta T. That's for specific heat capacity. Okay, this one right here, though, that's the important one here for latent heat. So all the energy is going to be used to just raise its temperature until it reaches, you know, the magic number is zero degrees Celsius. So let's just say so it goes up like this, and then it's going to remain constant. That's going to be a weird thing. I'll explain that in a second. After that, um, it's going to go up again. It's going to keep going up. And after that, it'll be constant again. And after that, it'll go up again. Now, the actual length of these things uh, and the actual heights of these things, those uh, depend on different factors, like what material you're using. In this case, if it's water or H2O, uh, then it's going to be something like this. And this one, by the way, keeps going up forever. Not quite forever, but really high at least. So what this really means is here, uh, the energy is using to actually heat. So you're actually using the energy to actually change the temperature. Do you notice energy being added, temperature goes up. But what happens right here? This is the important part, right here. Why is it flat? You're adding energy. Why isn't the temperature going up? Well, that's when it's changing phase. So this is the important thing here. When it's changing phase, in this case right here, it's, you could say it's melting, isn't it? It's melting. 
So that's going to be really important here. Then, uh, oh, by the way, let's maybe, uh, yeah, and up here then, it's going to be all liquid. After that, over here then, it's going to be boiling, you could say. Of course, we could reverse this process, couldn't we? Uh, but in this case, well, let's just talk about boiling that way. So that's what's been going on. And um, maybe I'll also put in sort of what is actually happening, like what kind of materials are we looking at here? Like what kind of phases do we have? So right here we have just solid, right? We just have solid water, uh, solid ice, I mean. Melting, we have solid ice plus water. Because as it's melting, right? We have solid ice plus water. Here, though, at this point right here, again, so it basically, uh, what's going to happen is this. As you add energy, the energy is used to raise the temperature, that's true, until it starts to melt. And during this melting, that's when you have a Q equals ML here going on. You're changing phase. As you change phase, the energy, uh, before the energy was being used to excite those molecules. In other words, that energy was being used to raise the kinetic energy. Remember that's making those molecules go faster, and faster molecules means higher temperature. So that's what was happening here in this raising the temperature uh, phase. When you're actually doing the melting, the energy is being used to break bonds. So you're still adding energy. It's just being used to break those bonds apart. So that's where the energy is going. It's not being used to raise the temperature. The temperature remains constant. It's that the energy is being used to break bonds. So that's why you have solid plus ice. Uh, how, uh, sorry, solid ice plus water. Then what you have is over here, you have all water, don't you? Because it's above uh, uh, zero degrees, but it's below 100. So here it's just water. Again, water then, the energy is being used to just raise the temperature of the water. In other words, it's being used to excite those water molecules, make them go faster. And remember, temperature is kinetic energy. So the faster they go, the higher temperature. And again, we reach a point here where we, break uh, we change the phase again because we're breaking bonds again. So here we have water. Uh, we could say plus steam. That's the form for uh, of gas for water, isn't it? So we have water plus steam. And of course, once you have all steam, then uh, in other words, that's a gas, right? There we go. So what's being used after that? Again, the temperature is uh, going up because the energy is being used to raise the temperature. And this goes up really, really high. That's why steam can be extremely hot. You ever seen like really bad movies sometimes they have someone get hurt by steam. I remember, uh, what was the movie? I think it was called Commando with uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's a really bad movie. But I remember near the end, there's a bad guy and there's some steam that goes on his face and sort of, you know, burns his face. Yeah, steam can burn because it can be way hotter than 100 degrees. It can be you know, many, many hundreds of degrees. But if you're going to deal with these kinds of questions um, in an IB format, you're probably just going to need to think about, oh, which one changed phase? Add a Q equals ML to that side of the Q lost equals Q gained sort of equation. And then there you go.